Hello and welcome to Retro Game Connect. I'm Dan Mastriani. I'm Ian Butterfield. And today, what you gonna do, brother, when we play Fire Pro Wrestling at Six Men Scramble on Saturn? That didn't really work as well. It didn't rhyme. I'm We're gonna right. wrestle. <laughs> yeah. So we are going into the world of professional wrestling with this game. Yeah! Uh, one thing that has always thunderstruck me is how much better Japanese wrestling games tend to be than American wrestling games. Um, about the point that this game came out, we were still getting games from Acclaim that basically uh, based all their characters on one sprite and everybody had the same moves and you only had 12 characters. In the meantime, this is over 100. Uh, several hundred moves. You can create your own wrestlers, which you couldn't do in an American game until a WWF Warzone on N64 and PlayStation 1. So you might say, in comparison, this really crushes the competition. I don't watch wrestling, but I get the gist. Yeah, it's... They hit each other. It's, it's good, good, good times. <laughs> yeah! Yeah. It's fun times, but... Yeah. Basically, uh, the series is actually very long-running. It started in 89 on the PC Engine, a.k.a. the Japanese version of the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, very few of the games have come out in English, but uh, we, can, we can talk about that in the wrap-up. Right now, I do want to mention, I, this is, I run across this completely by luck, but the series was actually created by Masato Masuda, who worked on Pro Wrestling for NES. Now, if you were had an NES in the 80s, you may remember the game fondly. It was kind of a button masher. You basically you can mash buttons as fast as you can. Gonna control. mash those buttons like I'm gonna mash your face. Exactly. Uh, it's also well known for being the source of a winner is you. This come kind of kind of an internet meme, right? It was like a winner is you. That bad translation. Uh, the most bad translation meme I know is uh, all your base are belong to us. Mm, that was a few years later, but yeah, yeah this is this is the original creator of a winner is you. Uh, it's pretty classic. And he created that, and later on he went on to create Fire Pro. And with Fire Pro, he says, like, okay, I did the button mashing thing, but I want to put more skill into it. So Fire Pro, uh, you do not want to mash buttons. That's the last thing you want to do is just mash on the control pad as fast as you can. It's all about timing. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll explain it a little better to you when we get into the game. Now, can we wrestle as cars? No, no. I'm not, the uh, wow. creator wrestler isn't quite that flexible. No cars. What about giant inflatable pandas? No. Ian enjoyed Fighters Mega Mix. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't watched that episode yet. Go watch it. It's entertaining. It's fun. Uh, basically, everybody in the game is based on a real wrestler, and they just change the names. Uh, in Japan, their copyright laws are a little looser. You're not likely to get in trouble if you make someone that looks an awful lot like a real person but has a different name. That's why you, know, like, you watch an anime and you have like a, a Somi TV. Or things like that. You know, they change one letter. They can, you can get away that bit easier in Japan. But the series actually went on for a long time. Uh, the most recent one was on PlayStation 2. So it it had a long life. Unfortunately, it's, it's been a while since they made a new one, but uh, hmm. last one was pretty complete. Uh, basically, it was originally created by a company called Human. Uh, Human went out of business in 99. It was picked up by Spike, who were also behind, I believe, Way of the Samurai, uh, and eventually merged with uh, Chunsoft, who are responsible for the Mystery Dungeon games. Who like I'm the course, Pokemon Mystery Like Dungeons. the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, which is the one you are most likely to have heard of, because you love Pokemon. Gotta if people haven't them figured them that out yet. Pokemon. If people haven't figured that, that out yet, they haven't been watching the show. Yeah, no. <laughs> Now, one other tidbit I'd like to hit before we start playing the game. Can I hit that tidbit? We are. We're going to punch it right in its ugly, ugly face. <laughs> but Goichi Suda, who people may know as Suda51, got what? a start. Suda Fed? What? No, yeah, Suda51, who head of Grasshopper Manufacturer, who works on weird games like Killer7 and Lollipop Chainsaw. And something more obvious that uh, No More Heroes, there we go, that's the more obvious one that was slipping oh, my mind. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, No More Heroes, that was another Suda51 game. the lightsaber ripoff. Yes, yes. The, it's a fun game. The Beam Katana. No, it's good things. Uh, good times. 
his first job in the industry was working for Human Entertainment. He worked on a couple of the Super Nintendo Fire Pro games. Uh, it's actually kind of infamous for, he created this scenario for, uh, I think it's, uh, I forget which one it was, but one of the Super Nintendo games, uh, at the end of the story mode, your wrestler kills himself, and that was all suit of 51. Yeah, he, he decides that uh, his life is empty, and, and now that he's beaten everyone, and he's just living to fight, and without fighting, he has nothing, so he, he hangs himself, I think. Yeah, downer ending. Uh, that is definitely not your princesses in another castle. No, no, yeah, that's why Suda51 is famous for being weird and awkward and off-putting. Like Sudafed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't happen in this game, so we'll, let's, let's go ahead and let's take it out. Let's wrestle, brother. So this guy is clearly very intense. I think one of the reasons that Japanese wrestling games uh, tend to be better is Japan just takes wrestling a lot more seriously than America does. Uh, they treat it, even though they know that it's not an actual athletic com competition, they still treat it more like a sport. Mm. So as you can see, you got Victory Road, which is your one player your mode. Pokemon ripoff. You know, no. This predates Pokemon. What, 96, 96. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, you've got one night matches, basically just, you know, your regular, just do a single match. Uh, you've got a league mode. Which is apparently a bunch of naked dudes. No, no I'm pretty sure they, they're they, wearing they look something. pretty naked. I, I think they've got something on. Come on now. Uh, you can do tournaments. Uh, you can do either elimination or round robin. Uh, this is the elimination match where you pick a team of wrestlers and uh, they wrestle each other one by one until somebody runs out of wrestlers. Uh, Battle Royale, of course, a uh, whole bunch of guys in the ring fighting each other. That's one of the things that makes this uh, the big improvement of the Saturn version. The reason it's called Six Men Scramble is because it's the first game to allow you to have six Five people. people. Wait, yeah, no, no. Huh? First one to let you have six people in the ring at once. Uh, Deathmatch, this is a fun one. Uh, you have an exploding cage. This is a match that was not done outside of Japan <laughs> because it's kind of insane. Uh, we definitely want to take a look at the death match. Gruesome fighting. Gruesome fighting is basically MMA. You know, MMA took off in Japan uh, years before it did in the U.S. So you've got an octagon and you've got, they changed the rules around so to be Where more they focused actually on fight? Yes, exactly. And this is the edit mode which lets you create your own wrestlers. Uh, you get a decent amount of slots in this. Uh, I forget how many exactly it is, but it's in double, easily in double digits. Uh, rename to so you can rename the wrestlers to their real names because they're all real wrestlers. I have already done that. And options which you don't need to change. Oh, title match. You can create. Um, I don't think this one lets you create your. This might let you create your own titles. I forget if they added that in this version. But you can wrestle for the titles in the game, whether they are default titles or when you create yourself. Uh, before we start playing, I do want to take a quick look at Wrestler Edit. We're not actually going to edit a wrestler because that takes a while. Mm -hmm. But I just want to show off your options. Now, you can name them. You can uh, change your stances and things. The uh, really cool thing about this game is you can edit their logic. The, this option is CPU logic. You can actually program how you want them to act in the match. Hmm. So if you, you can, how often they do certain moves, how they react in certain situations. So you get a lot of control over what your wrestler can do. Uh, you can obviously edit their looks and things, and I'm not really going to go through, through that, but I do want to... Let's see. Parameter edit. I think I want this option. Looting. Come on, anytime now. Yes, I just want to do a quick show-off to see show you how many moves are in this game. As you can see, these are all the situations in which you can do moves. Uh, you can see there are quite a lot of them. And we'll just go into uh, one of the C ones that 
it gives you uh, these are regular moves. Yeah, back in the day, you kind of had to have a translation back for this. Rule. Uh, yes, I think these are grapples. So, I mean, let's just look at all the moves you can give your wrestler. This is just one category. I think uh, the X button will show you preview. Yeah, so this is just a little roll up. It's a standard suplex. Oh, actually, that's a hang, hanging brain buster. Wait Boom. a minute. That character looks like a lambda. And if you cut off his arm, he'll have three limbs. Half life three. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm very tired today. Mm. Oh, elevated DDT. That's really unpleasant looking. But as you can see, just tons and tons of moves that your wrestler can do. And again, this is compared to you know, WF games at the time where maybe you got into double digits with moves, but on the super, any of the Super Nintendo ones, everyone had the exact same moves. It was ridiculous. Hmm. Uh, the way they do that is, uh, I don't know if you can tell from the way the characters are moving, it actually uses a jointed animation technique. So instead of uh, drawing an entire body sprite, you've got separate legs. You can see how it's oh, yeah, you kind can of floating. Sort up, of right? see them moving independently. Arms, things. So they sort of like how the tire them. was floating off of the Hornet. Yes. He's built out of several different sprites, so that allows him to create many more moves and characters and all that by building them out of these common blocks, and which means your created wrestlers look just like the in game wrestlers. Nifty. So, of course, we won't actually try to create a wrestler right now because, oh my god, that would take forever. Especially because uh, Japanese. Yeah, I did not bring a translation guide because we're just playing one player mode and I can handle that on my own. I can read some Latin. Oh, there you go. So That's not really going to help. We'll do, just to make it quick, let's do first off, to show off the regular match and I'll, I'll kind of tell you how to play a little. Let's get ready to rumble! Which is, I, I had this on, interesting, I was doing a three-on-one match for some reason last time I played this, why not? So we'll team up against the computer. Uh, so that basically you can see, you can set a lot of options. Fifteen uh, tentacles. Right now, yeah, we have it set on the standard uh, three count for a pin. Uh, Fifteen minute time limit. Uh, one fall. We are in the American Pro Wrestling Room at the Human Dome, which is kind of... Designed is, to look like the Tokyo Dome. Is a dome. I've made turned down the human body parts. Yeah, no. I've turned down the computer difficulty all the way, which I think we appreciate. Uh, you can change the speed that the game plays at. You can speed it up if it's not fast enough for you. I've got huh. it just on the default. Uh, if you were doing a game like a tournament or something where you'd have computer versus computer matches, you could set computer skip, and it would skip past those matches. It just kind of show you highlights, so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. Uh, you can select from four different referees who are also based on real people. Uh, you can set whether um, you get rope breaks, like if you're too close to the ropes, the referee will break a submission hold or a pin. Uh, this is lumberjack mode, so uh, if that's I'm on. A lumberjack and I'm yeah. okay, sleep all night, tend to work all day. They can't put enough wrestlers to do this how you would do it in an actual wrestling match, which is where the ring would be surrounded by other wrestlers. And if someone gets thrown out, they throw them back in. Uh, in the game, it's just your wrestler get, immediately gets back in if they're thrown out of the ring automatically. So you don't do any wrestling outside of the ring. Uh, tornado. Is this? Yes, this is Tornado. So Tornado tag means everyone's in the ring at the same time. You don't have to tag in and out. Which we'll go ahead and do because it's easier. Uh, play. I don't actually remember what that is. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, ring out count on, uh, disqualification count on, background, music is random. You can really? also, I forget uh, what setting it was, you can set how common, maybe this one didn't have that option, uh, later ones you can set how common uh, criticals are. And I will explain what a critical is in a moment. So as you can see, there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of wrestlers. Uh, you also got some MMA guys. These are MMA guys. Um, you generally don't want to take them on in a normal wrestling match because they can actually break your arm. 
and had a match in five seconds, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick my creative wrestler, or as you would call it in Fire Pro terms, and edit it. I put myself in the game. The various guys, I also uh, create Owen. Owen is not in the game by default. I put him Owen Hart in there. Andre the Giant Andre is. The He's a big guy. All right, and uh, we'll do another, we'll do an all-American match. We'll take on... Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. Yes, and Hulk Hogan. The Mega Powers. Yeah! Ooh, yeah! Ooh, rises to the top, yeah! So, as I mentioned, this is all based on timing. So, basically, at the point where your wrestlers touch, or you walk into each other to do a grapple, kind of like in Final Fight. When your wrestlers touch, that's when you want to enter your command. So, you got weak, medium, strong, and you have different moves depending on where you're holding up, down... Left and right are the same move, and neutral is another move. And when you're not grappling, you know, these weak, medium, strong strikes. Um, I haven't played the Saturn one in a while, so I forget which one is run, though I'm sure you'll be able to find it very easily. Mm -hmm. And your wrestlers can get tired, so there's if you find the button that makes your guy kind of look like he's breathing, that's how you rest and get, get your breath back. I'm not really a big fan of how I did my face in this one. Uh, there are more options again in later games. He just so we actually went by the commentary booth, so that's fun. Nice little detail. See people there uh, calling the matches. Here comes uh, Ooh, yeah. Macho Man and Hogan with uh, legally distinct versions of their theme music. And now we beat them up. So as I mentioned earlier, Fire Pro is all about timing. So basically, right when your characters touch, to lock up is when you want to hit your button to do your attack. And also, you see I just got reversed. That's because I tried to do a move that I hadn't worn the computer down enough yet. So the weaker they are, the more powerful move you can hit on them. So it's like Super Smash Brothers? Yes, in a way. Yeah, like, just like how in Smash Brothers, so the farther, the weaker they are, the farther they fly. In Fire Pro, the weaker they are the more powerful a move you can hit. I don't remember off the top of my head if uh, you have giant class wrestlers in this particular Fire Pro. Basically a giant class wrestler you generally can't lift because they're so huge. So unless your, char your character is really hyped up and they're really weakened, generally you won't be able to pick them up. They'll just counter anything that involves lifting. Oh yeah. Yes, that is the thing the Macho Man says. Uh, you also want to vary your move set if you can, or else the crowd will start booing you. Screw the crowd. I'm just saying. It's a little detail they put in. You got double team moves. Yeah, I countered one at the beginning of the match. I will break you. Guys in the corner. You should make oh. Bane as a character. That'd be you could totally do that if you wanted to. Uh, I think you could probably uh, create him uh, pretty well with like a Hayabusa mask, maybe. I think a decent resemblance. I think you have the necessary parts to do Bane. Especially if you do the comic book version of Bane. Yes. Now, as you can see, your guy is pretty gassed, so you want to hold the Y button to catch your breath. I think I'm doing that neck uh, drop a bit too much. You can grab guys and drag them around if you want to need to reposition them. You can pick him up and stand him back up. Ooh. I just caught the guy. A nice crusher. Ow. Would you bump into each other? I don't know. He drop kicked me. Oh, that's not good. Jerk. Yeah. It's like he's trying to win the match or something. Oh, here's my finisher. Have I weakened him enough? We'll never know because the Macho Man broke up the pin. Looks like I've got Hogan down, though. He can keep, continue to keep the Macho Man busy. I might be able to finish him off. I've got him in the cross-face chicken wing. Oh, Macho Man interfered oh, again. Yeah. Ah, kicking the crash. Earth didn't see it, it's fine. Judo oh, no. chop! I didn't move to double suplex. Another thing, since this game is actually the first game in the series to allow you to have more than four people. Really? Uh, you can actually have 
triple team moves. I don't think so, Hogan. Break your legs. Uh, you can attack body parts, so I can, uh, if you keep attacking someone's legs, they'll be weakened. Hogan! I'm gonna go ahead and mention, I don't know if we'll see it because it's random, but the games include something called criticals. Uh, what a critical attack is, is basically uh, when a move results in an injury, you get a critical. So basically you've knocked someone out or you've broken a limb or something like that. Gotta go for my finish. Got Kogan busy. We may have him. Oh, he got out. A uh, fun thing in the edit mode, uh, you get to select your finisher, obviously. But you can also... Oh, yeah! Rename it. So basically, you select your own finisher and then you just name it whatever you'd like. And go for the top rope. Tombstone Pile Driver. You'll probably murder somebody. So basically, this is a weird thing about the game is, but unless a guy gives up immediately, he's probably not going to tap. But you know, if you want to wear him down, you can uh, you can go ahead and hold on to move. He's asking if Macho Man wants to give up. Oh. I know it's kind of hard to tell because of the Japanese accent. He's actually saying "give up" in English. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, jerk. Like you could actually lift Andre the Giant. He must be really pumped. Ow, you kicked me in the crotch. Yep, nope. just got a rope break because I was too close to the ropes. Come on, ref, what are you doing? That's illegal. So I'm going to see if I can break things. Even Macho Man Randy Savage is really beat up. Hmm. Well, you are Andre the Giant. He is gigantic. There yes. we go. No one beats Fezzik. And while you were stretching him out, I managed to uh, catch Hogan with a Hurricane Rana. Yeah, stretch him. He deserves it. I'm going to beat up that's Hogan right. one more. Rub Boom. Points. So that's what you're doing. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Also, the game lets you beat people up. I've never, ever seen Hogan do a, a leg scissors. Yeah, so you can kind of give guys a post-match beat down too. So that's another fun wrestling thing. Apparently they're making out now. Yeah, he's crushing. He's crushing his ribs. They're making out. Choke him up. No. He's crushing his spirit. Yes. So there you go. That's a fairly regular match. But what would wrestling be without special match types? What would it be? So we're going to look at the big improvement I mentioned earlier. This is the first game to allow you to have six wrestlers in the ring at once. Which made the Battle Royale a bit more special. Mm -hmm. You got different Battle Royales. You can have the normal where you have to pin or submit everybody. Uh, and once they're beaten, they have to leave. Uh, you've got the Endless, where they stay in the ring until the end of the match, so you can continue causing trouble for your opponents, even after you've already lost. And Over the Rope, which is more like a traditional battle royale, so basically, you get thrown out of the ring, you lose. So we'll do that one, because it'll run a little faster. I know we don't want to take too long. I'll be my approximation of me again. And just because I like to, I'm going to take this guy out and replace him um, with I'll Johnny Ace. This guy is. Oh, Big Van Vader. He is pretty nasty. Uh, yeah. He wrestled in WCW for a while. If you press different buttons, you can get different colors. If you want to try to look at his uh, other outfits. I think Z is often the uh, one they actually use. There you go. 
Yeah, you gotta select your, there you go, the Z. There you go, that is his real life outfit that he normally wrestled in at the time. Oh yeah! And these are the guys I'm just gonna leave alone. Because, whatever. This how was fine. Oh, I've got to switch him to his green tights. Whatever. I like his green tights. Yeah, he, uh, he unfortunately, uh, Misato Misawa, isn't Masato? I'm getting confused. Yeah. He uh, passed away. He uh, took a bad, uh, had a bad fall, basically. Someone hit him with a suplex to kind of land you right in the back of his neck, and he hit wrong and oh. died, in the, died in the hospital a few hours later. That sucks. It's a shame. So here's a little secret about Fire Pro. If, if I can get somebody on their own, I'm going to get in the sour, I guess. Is, oh, here's that triple team move. Though at this point, pretty much all they had was uh, all three guys being on each other. But if you hit someone while they're rebounding off the ropes, let's see if I can do it properly here, they will always go over. So let's not fight each other. We'll, let's take out the computer first. I'm just going to attack whoever's in front of me. Oh, I see how it is. Because that seems to be something I can do. It is. I mean, you're Vader. You're a big, angry guy. Vader's known for being stiff, which basically uh, means he tends to actually hit people. So, you know, he's a... He's a pretty tough guy. <laughs> Here's a horrifying story. Vader once got his eyeball popped out Ow. in the middle of a match, uh, which he he popped it back in, then he finished the match. Ow. Yeah. That's some steroids right there. Uh, if you look at Vader, do you really think that's the guy that's on steroids? Man. Uh, I don't know if the game really uh, does it justice, but he's uh, he's a little chunky. You can be chunky and on steroids, Mike. All right. And the guy takes his face. And yeah, taunt a little. I pinned that guy out. Good work. Woo! I actually did it. Th and suddenly I just walked out of the oh, ring. Oh, um, maybe you were the one that got pinned and you were confused. I don't know. Yes. Uh, you may have misread that situation. Well, I can't tell. It's a shame you didn't stay in the match longer, though. He's kind of a critical machine, so he might have uh, might have actually knocked somebody out. So I suppose we will actually see that when we do the gruesome fighting, which is basically MMA. Let's catch my breath a little. MMA matches generally go to knockout, so... You can interrupt other people's grapples. So one of the weaknesses of the game it is kind of can be kind of hard to line up strikes. You have to be really, especially in the older ones, you have to be really on target. And I just mean high boost now. See if I can catch him with my finisher. Nope, he kicked out. Ooh, that got him. Right on the button. more variability in wrestling games than there are in wrestling matches. Well, it depends on who you're watching. And that's kind of insane. But that, I did that. Oh, too far away. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, did this one also have... Yes, it also has an extra move. If you hit A and B together. So there you go, I got that Fujiwara armbar. Yeah, he's so beat up that he can't. What if he ground him in the face with a tire? Uh, that would be a different game. Yes. Or spin around in a circle and hit oh him with boy. a beach ball. Oh! Yes, yeah, he just ran right into me. 
That was sloppy. Guess I'm coming back. And later games, this one you only have, uh, I think, two moves for a guy that's rebounding off the ropes, but in later ones they added another one. And also, for some reason, you don't have running attacks to a downed opponent until the, the most recent Fire Pearl. Taken down with a Tornado DDT. This actually reminds me, uh, depending on what strength move you do, you get uh, different results. Oh, he wasn't this. So, like, C-button moves, uh, instead of, like, keeping them down, they'll, they'll get up dazed, so you can hit top rope moves and things like that. B-button moves will keep them down longer if you want to, say, do a big splash off the top rope. So there's a lot of technical items for this. Uh, we didn't even see it in our tag team match. You can lift guys up on your shoulders and have another guy come off the top rope to hit him. Oh, damn. You can just grab them from behind and just, you know, so somebody can get a, one of their big strikes in that they might normally be too slow to hit somebody. So the depth is really huge. And you'll see this will show, like, how long the match went, though obviously it runs faster than real life, uh, and how everybody was eliminated. So these guys were tossed out of the ring. I got the, I got Hybrosa with a Magistral Cradle. Vader, you looks like you got hit with a... Oh, yeah, you just got rolled up with a small package. Okay. That's basically when you just grab a guy and roll him up fast. Just... All right, here's another thing that I believe was a new feature for this one is the death match. So this is the exploding ring death match. Uh, normally, you would not want to set the time limit to one minute because once the ring explodes, the match is pretty much over. But we want to see the ring explode, so Let's we're going to do that. jump right in. Yeah. This is an extreme match, so I will use my other creative character. Basically, when I first got this game, I was actually on vacation in uh, Massachusetts. I saw that they had Saturns for $80, and they had a bunch of import games and you know the uh, little special cart you needed to defeat the region lock. Mm -hmm. And I, I had played a previous Fire Pro uh, through Beans we won't discuss here. And I was really excited, I was like, oh, they have Fire Pro. I'd love to play this game. And I picked this up in Fire Pro, but since I was still on vacation, obviously I couldn't look up any translations. But I did want to mess around with the edit mode and create a wrestler. So I tried to create a wrestler at the time named Kane, who has like a big red outfit and a mask and all that. And I didn't really quite get it. So I... Uh, but I kind of liked the look I got for him. Oh, Spider-Man. It does kind of look like Spider-Man. Oh. Oh, wait, no, no, see, you're black Spider-Man. It's okay. Oh, okay. Symbiote Spider-Man. Exactly. It's fine. Maybe that'll make me stronger. You could. But no, no, he's, he's weak against heat and vibrations, and explosions are very bad for him. That's true. But anyways, you know, I created the character, and I kind of liked the look, so I just, just gave him a bunch of... Crazy power moves and a goofy name that I thought was funny. And... Got him. So this match is not going to last very long. This is the one time you actually want to match buttons in Fire Pro is when you get to that little uh, test of strength there. So I can do my big move is blowing fire, but of course I haven't worn you down enough, so you'll automatically avoid it. Yeah, that's basically that's what, exactly what he's designed for. Before the ring explodes, I'm going to throw you into the cage, which is electrified. Ow. Yeah, as you can see, you're a lot faster than I am, so you have an advantage there. Oh, see, you countered the choke slam. Actually, that brings me to uh, another point. You can select different types of counter. Like, depending on what kind of wrestler you are. Oh, and oh. we died. And exploded. Yep, we're dead. Even He's the dead, ref Jim. Is, even the ref is all like, oh god, oh god, my face. He's dead, Jim. Yeah, that was bad. 
So depending on your wrestler style, you have different counters in the moves. So it, there's just so much detail in the game. Granite, marble, things like that. Yes. For your yeah. different counters. Yeah, no, I see what you did there. And of course, one last thing to take a look at is gruesome fighting, which is basically just MMA. You know, you're in the octagon and you're looking for knockouts or tap outs. Punch in the face. Exactly. So this is moves pretty fast. You've got rounds and things like that. Uh, so this is the time when we we'll want to use like the martial arts guy and all that. Uh, we got Dan Severn. We got the, one of the Gracies. I mean, a guy that coincidentally resembles the Gracies. Here we go. I'll be Ken Shamrock. Uh, this is the Lucha Libre guy, which is they fly around the ring. Probably not your best. Uh, Music sounded very um, cantina band. Hmm. I'll be this guy. Sure, why not? He seems to change skin color when you to the. That was you know. weird. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is I was sick that day costume. But. So this is going to be very strike based. I don't think they had added it yet in this version, but in later versions you actually have um, takedown modes. You know, you can like go down to the mat. And do ground grapples. So yeah, I'm just gonna punch you in the face, and in this mode that's legal. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, actually, I think rocking the D-pad is the best way to get out of uh, holds. So, yeah, as I said, it can be really hard to line up strikes. So now I'm trying to break your leg. Oh, there's this famous ankle lock. It's like you went for a takedown and you missed. Oh, that kind of. I voted in the face. You did. That didn't work out for me. As you can see, you've got the octagon. You can't Irish whip guys into the ropes in this one. Uh, they actually changed this in later games because uh, the UFC got a wind of it, and they were like, yeah, no, don't do that. We own the octagon, which seems kind of silly. You wouldn't think they'd be able to... Uh, yeah. You wouldn't think they'd be able to copyright... A shape. A shape, but, um, you know, Spike didn't want to deal with their lawyer, so they, they changed it to a hexagon. Just change it to a deck of dawn because of logic. There you go. There you go. Our ring has even more size than yours. How about that? It's more extreme. Exactly. This is actually, you know, one of the one of the first games to incorporate MMA before MMA game was really getting its own games. And Japan uh, latched on to MMA sooner than the US did. And of course this mode you're not really worrying about how entertaining your matches are, you just want to be as effective as possible. Because mm. after all, professional wrestling is ultimately a performance. And yes. you want, you're worried about entertaining the crowd. It's essentially this... violent ballet. Exactly. Oh, get to the front face lock. Whereas this is, you know, actual sport where you're actually hitting people and trying to beat them up. I did that already. Oop, the crowd's getting loud. So, you know, Can you tell I'm not very good at this? He's got to get the timing down. Uh oh, I'm getting a little... Uh... Oh, that's a nice one. This is so many different moves. I'm getting a little gassed. That was smooth. That's right. Keep, keep me out with the kicks. A smart strategy. Oh. I'm going to keep working your head. Oh, I reversed it to a heel hook. Now, you can also, if you want to, uh, choose to release your own holds. Though one of the things that always bothered me about Fire Pro is it does not have a separate animation for releasing the hold. It's basically uh, the same animation as if you'd broken the hold. 
which is really awkward if that animation, say, involves you kicking the guy, you getting kicked in the face. Like, yeah, I got, I, got, yeah, I got nothing here. Yeah, but you see how your guy basically uh, kind of wrestled me off him? Yeah. So even if I had decided to let go of that hold my own, on my own, you would have gotten the same animation. Last 30 seconds. So I'm not sure if there are, like, points in this. Oh, there we go. There's a critical. So you can see if I let go of you, you're just out. Yep. So that represents me like choking you out, like some kind of injury or like a knockout or something. Yeah. Rawr. Ken Jamra. So there you go. That was interesting. Definitely complex for its time. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. this is in 1996, right? And this is just an expansion of a lot of features that were already on the Super Nintendo versions yeah. of this game. So in the meantime, we're getting incredibly simplistic wrestling games with the WWF license. And they're take, making these unlicensed games with more wrestlers, more moves, more options. It's because the license is selling it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at the time, I they didn't know have, any better. They don't have to put that much effort into it. The yeah. license sells it. Yeah, I was playing WWE. <coughs> <coughs> Movie license games. <coughs> oh, boy. <coughs> no. Well, that's a whole can of worms. Mm. But at the time, I was playing WDIF games and thinking they were pretty all right. And then I played these Japanese wrestling games and was like, what? Come on, really? <laughs> so a lot, not a lot of them actually made it out in the U.S. as far as just Japanese wrestling games in general. Not until the mid-90s where basically Japanese developers were making all of the wrestling games. You know, Acclaim had their Warzone and Attitude WWF games, and they just were a mess. And at that point, people were finally like, okay, this is, this is not very good. In the meantime, THQ had contracted with uh, the guys at Ukes, and they were just using their games with their, the engine that had been developed for Japanese games and putting uh, their WCW license on it. Or actually, yeah, they did WCW games with the and they uh, also uh, worked with Aki for the N64 games, which are very popular, and I hmm. think we'll probably, we'll probably play No Mercy at some point, which is considered like one of the best WF games ever. Uh, and I, the, I, I, I know so little about wrestling. I've been lost this whole monologue, personally. Basically, I'm saying in the 90s, things kind of started turning around. Yeah. Because basically the Japanese developers took over developing the wrestling games, and they made better wrestling games. Now, I want, don't want to say American, because actually a lot of the uh, 90s WAF games were developed by Sculpture Software, which is actually from England. But, you know, Western games, either way. Fire Pro did come over three times. Uh, two Game Boy Advance games were translated and one PS2 game. Hmm. So whereas this is a great deep game, uh, my recommendation is actually Fire Pro Wrestling Returns on PS2. Because one, it's in English, which I think a lot of you will find a big plus point. And two, it's a lot easier to get a hold of. Mm. You know, it's not that old. Uh, I don't think physical copies are too hard to find. But it's actually been released as a PS2 classic. So you can download it on your PlayStation 3 right now, 10 bucks. Nice. So it's cheap, it's easy to get a hold of. It's in Hello. English, it's got so many options. It's got more options than this does. Uh, they had you know, face layers for further customizing your wrestler, so there's some more customization options. There are over 1,000 moves, I think uh, actually over 1,500. Wow. Individual wrestling moves that you can assign to your wrestlers. Uh, the base game has over 300 wrestlers, but you have 500 slots for wrestlers you create. Oh, wow. And since, you know, you've got your PlayStation 3 connected to the Internet, you can download other people's saves and grab wrestlers that they made and just made this collection of all the wrestlers you want to play. Very nice. So I love Fire Pro because it's just the deepest, most loving, you know, expansive wrestling game that you can get. And it's 
I think it's just one of the best wrestling games. You know, some people will dismiss it because, oh, why does it still have 2D graphics? But, you know, as someone who grew up in the 16-bit era, I'm perfectly fine with 2D graphics. Yeah. And I love how great the gameplay is. It's something that has a learning curve. You know, you got to get that timing down. But once you figure out all the nuances, it's really easy to play. It's something I can always go back to and enjoy. So I, I hope you got kind of a... It was interesting. A uh, little more time invested in it. I might have enjoyed it a little more, but mm-hmm. I was sort of uh, just sort of flailing around in it a bit. It's not too hard. You just got to like get used to the system. You know? yeah. the, thing, the most important thing to learn is to move up from weak to meme to strong and when to kind of get a sense of when it's, you've worn down your opponent enough that you can hit more powerful moves. See, I'm used to just sparring with people in real life. Hmm. So, well, think about it in real life, right? If you go for, uh, if you don't wear your your opponent out, and you go for a big flashy kick, what's going to happen to you? You don't go for the flashy kick while you're fighting. Yeah, you, the, the flashy kick is just for show. Yeah, flashy kick is usually just for show. That's a good point. <laughs> that, there's let your me, first let, problem. There's your first problem. You don't go for the flashy kick. When I'm, you're let me, to I'm actually... going to try to think. I got to try and think of a better analogy here. It's basically. Uh, Maybe for a more complex move that's actually effective. I usually just hit him yeah. right in the ear and it pops your eardrum. I suppose this is, this, is, this is probably a bad analogy this because is, in, real fighting, you want to be, in real fighting you want to be as simple as possible. Exactly. I refer to them as finishing blows. Yes. Yeah. Finishing blows. Yeah, no, that's, that's a bad analogy. You want to start with those. <laughs> but, you know, I don't, sometimes you might have a big power hit that you might want to save up for later on to finish a guy off if he can't get through his defenses early on. Maybe, no. Yeah, yeah well, you see what I'm trying we, to say. We, we've fallen off topic. I like the wrestling game. <laughs> <laughs> if you also like the wrestling game, give us a like on the video. If you want to see us play other games that may or may not involve wrestling. Or might involve cars fighting inflated panda bears. Did we mention he liked fu- we, when we played Fighters Mega Mix? <laughs> it's a pretty good game. It's pretty silly. If you want to see that or other videos we do in the future, make sure we subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. A little late in the day, folks. <laughs> I have been Dan Mastriani. You can find me on Twitter at, at NewTypeCola. If you want to tell me that you also like Fire Pro Wrestling, somebody is out there. I know they are. I'm Ian Butterfield. You can find me on Twitter at, at Ian G. Butterfield, and we can talk about how hilarious it is to have a car and a panda fight. And make sure you join us next time on Retro Game Connect.